Um, the problem when speaking after an expert like Lucia is that this expert might already say everything you have to say, so <laughs> I'm trying to um, um, take a bit of different approach here. Um, and I'd like to uh, first just mention or stress the fact that I, th I believe that the conceptual um, debate is really important in the sense of what we call these, uh, these, these movements that we're talking about or these groups that we're talking about. Um, we are here offered with a new uh, terminology, which is political Islamist movements. Or, uh, the acronym is PIMS. Um, and I'm not sure um, if this is... Uh, I, I, I want to stress the importance of, of, of trying to figure out what we should actually call these movements, because the term political Islam, as the term Islamism, as we have heard several times, is very much contested. Um, not only from the point of view of Western academia, but also of, from the uh, uh, point of view of the so-called uh, Islamists or Muslims themselves. Um, there was a famous debate, for example, in 1925, opened by a certain Ali Abdel Razik, who was a cleric, uh, an, an, an alim in Al-Azhar University in Egypt, who actually contested in a, a famous um, piece of writing called Islam wa Usul al-Hukm, he actually contested the idea that Islam has a implies a political theory itself. And by that doing so, he took the counterpoint to Hassan al-Banna, who, of course, with his concept of uh, uh, Islam and Islam shamil wa kamil, uh, you know, made a point that, that the, the, the aspect of politics is inherent to Islam. So I think there is a debate that, that needs to happen here among uh, Muslims and among Islamists themselves as to the fact whether or not <laughs> Islam actually uh, implies a political theory. And, um, and, and there, are, there are predecessors, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but we just need to go back to uh, Ali Abdel Razik and Hassan al-Banna and this debate that happened in the 1920s in Egypt. And then from an analytical point of view, um, I guess that the term Islamism is not particularly helpful as well because it doesn't actually say us anything about the political behavior of so-called Islamist movements. Now, if you have Salafi quietists who are pro-Sisi supporters, such as the Noor Party, or democratic Islamists, such as Anahda in Tunisia, or to the moderate Muslim Brotherhood, all the way to ISIS, if you call all of these political Islamist movements, then what is really the value of this terminology? Because as I said, it doesn't say us anything about the actual political behavior. And in order to understand actual political behavior, we have to go back into the field and understand Islamist movements. I mean, when I say Islamist movements, you can think about quotation marks around the term. Um, we need to see the diversity and the circumstances of, and the context in which religious activists uh, will activate the, the domain of the political. And um, I'm, I'm not mentioning this to just provoke a semantic academic debate, but it has real uh, implications in terms of how we understand the period of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in, 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 in governing Egypt in 2012 and 2013. Um, which I did my research about, and I would like to actually build on the, on the point that was made by Lucia, who mentioned that um, I agree there was a conflict within the Muslim Brotherhood, and um, I think Lucia mentioned that it came to the fore in 2011, um, and I just want to give you some more uh, historical context around this, uh, this debate, because... <laughs> It's been actually, the conflict has been going on within the framework of the Muslim Brotherhood since the time of its founding. And there was a, a very early debate between Hassan al-Banna and one of his key political leaders about who should take the spiritual role in the party and who, who should be more uh, the, the, the political master. And um, after the 1970s, uh, the so-called Asis Athani, the second founding of the Brotherhood, this, this debate has gained a considerable um, uh, uh, impetus um, with the rise of the student leaders, Abu al-Futu mainly, um, Islam al-Aryan and Abu al al-Mahdi, um, who were, of course, politicians who were active in the student unions in the 1970s in Egypt. 
And um, later, the, the Tanzimi trend, what the Muslim Brotherhood itself refers to as the Tanzimi trend, so the organizational trend, which was represented mainly by Mustafa Mashur and later by Mahmoud Izzat, Mohammed Badia, and Mahmoud Hussein, Ibrahim Munir, who is basically the, the, the London based uh, leadership today. And um, Lucia has, has um, uh, framed the debate as a debate between um, reformists and conservatives. And I just want to um, uh, look a little bit more into the, the, the notion of the so called Tanzimi trend in Arabic. And actually, what you will find when you look at their literature and you look at their writings and you, you, you talk to these people is that there, there was actually a self-conceptualization of this uh, conservative, sometimes also derivatively called Qutubist trend as a vanguard, a Thalia. And uh, the notion of the vanguard is, is of course, they, they, I mean, the, the Tanzimi trend took this from Said Qutub. Um, who writes in his Ma'alim uh, Fitariq, Milestones, um, who recommends that the Muslim Brotherhood should actually form a vanguard, which sets out with this, and I quote, which sets out with a determination and then keeps walking on the path, marching through the vast ocean of ignorance that has encompassed the entire world. So what Khutub sort of introduced within the organizational thinking of the Brotherhood is a vanguardist uh, trend, which is actually a similar thing that Lenin introduced uh, in, in, the, in the debate between the Bolshevists and the Menshevists. And it's actually something that, is, that, that we can find in, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a way to solve the leadership conundrum in the sense. You, you, you appoint a vanguard, you appoint the self-appointed vanguard, and say, these guys, they have superior knowledge, they know better than everybody else what's to do, so let's just give the power to these guys, and they will surely lead us to, um, to, to salvation. And this is actually pretty much what, hap what happened in the Muslim Brotherhood. This debate cam came to, um, within, the, within the organizational framework of the Brotherhood, there was a guidance office uh, election in 2000, end of 2009, which is actually when um, most of the reformists were pushed out, or actually all the reformists were pushed out of the guidance office, and the people that were in charge were these Tanzimis, or Qutubists, or, um, and, and once the Arab Spring came along, it, the, the, the party was sort of devoid of any of the political figures, of any of the people who would have had the political experience to actually be able to negotiate the um, you know, a new government, an inclusive government. And um, so the, the Tanzimis, they sort of took the party project out of the drawer that had been suggested for a very long time, for decades, by people like Abul Futu and others. And they, they tried to go with it, but this was just really, you know, th there was no real political experience behind that. And this is actually one of the reasons why I believe they failed. And so, if we just want to link that debate back to the conceptual debate that I proposed in the beginning, I think it would be useful to look at these political uh, movements, political Islamist movements, to actually conceptualize them as political organizations rather than movements. Because um, if we talk about an organization, we are forced to look into what happens within this organization. And there is a whole new field of politics, of internal organizational politics and conflict that we will find. And actually, it's, it's not a debate that we need to reinvent either. We can just look at Max Weber, who wrote uh, um, a lot about uh, politics and legitimacy and uh, um, concepts such as power and status within an organization. Um, and to sort of, so I would just recommend to this forum to, uh, use more this kind of concept of organization rather than movement, which presumes that it's a unified movement with a singular ideology, um, and try to understand the failure of political uh, Islamist movements by looking at within these movements. Thank you, Victor. That is my contribution. Thanks.